Hi, I'm Pam with PJ's Glass Creations. Welcome to part four of my garden flower series. In the past, I showed you how to make hibiscus, hyacinths, poppies, daisies, and now you may have all these flowers and you're wondering, what can I do with them? Well, I'm going to show you a few things. One is just a really simple way to make it into a garden stake. I have a bonus video in here of how to make leaves if you're making some kind of panel. And then the big part of the video is how to make this gorgeous panel with these 3D flowers on it. It can be hung on a wall, it can be hung in a window. So stay with me and watch until the end. There are a lot of ideas at the end as well. And if you like what you see, don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel because there'll be many more videos to come. You can also follow me on Facebook and on Etsy. Let's get started. The easiest thing to do with your flowers is to make a garden stake out of them. These are great for flower pots, especially if you live somewhere where the weather just doesn't cooperate very well. Here it gets way too hot and all summer long the flowers would just die. So these are a great color accent to my uh, flower pots. And what I'm using here is an aluminum craft wire. I got it off of Amazon. It's actually really cheap and easy to work with, easy to bend, holds up well. So I'm going to cut off, I don't know, approximately eight inches. And I'm going to use some pliers and make a loop and then kind of bend it up. So it's almost like a, kind of like a lollipop shape. And then I'm going to use a two-part epoxy. So what I am using is this uh, JB Clear Weld. It, I like it because it um, sets up quickly. It sets up in about five minutes, so I don't have to wait for it too long. And then it also um, totally hardens in about an hour, although I would still wait maybe 24 hours. And all you do with this, there's a part A and a part B, is you want um, equal parts. So I just count as I do it. One, two, three three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That way I have equal parts. And I stir it about 50 times. And then the next thing I do is make sure that I can get this to sit well on my piece. I don't want it falling off. So sometimes I have to bend it a little bit. See, it's falling off there. And of course, when I'm filming, it's not going to cooperate like it always does. There we go. Oh, maybe not. Try this one. There we go. So I have this balanced here, and the reason I want it balanced is I just want to give it time to dry. And I'm just going to put some of this two-part epoxy right in the middle. Kind of watch it, because sometimes it'll flow over the edges, and you might want to clean it up as it's drying. And that's all there is to it. Once it's dry, you can stick it into your flower pots and add lots of color. The next part I'm going to show you requires some greenery. So I wanna to talk to you for just a minute about leaves. And I have these molds. I got them from a place called The Glass House. And if you want to look for them, it's glasshousestore.com. I hope they still have them. I got them quite a while ago. Um, but I'll talk to you in a minute about what those are for. But we're gonna use it for a template first. And to make the leaves, I'm going to just trace my leaf and you know when I trace it, my line is going to be on the outside of this. So I want to cut my leaf just a little bit smaller by cutting right on the inside edge of that leaf. And 
And since these are leaves, they don't have to be perfect. Like I said, they don't have to be perfect. And I am going to take this to the grinder. I will be right back. If you see, there's two parts. One part is concave and one part is convex. So I'm going to put this leaf on the concave part and make a sandwich of it by putting the other part, the convex part on top. When you buy these leaves, they come with the firing schedule. It is a little different than most of your other schedules. But the nice thing is when it's done, you end up with a leaf that has veining on both sides. Not that we'll really see both sides on this project, but um, just nice to know. And then if you notice on this project, you'll see that my leaves are, they kind of have a shape to them, they're not flat. And the way I do that is I either stick them in a bowl, kind of get them to balance on the edge, slump it into the bowl. You can use something like a wave mold instead, put it over the top here so it's this way, or put it here so that it scoops down. Um, lots of ways to get different shapes for your leaves. The other thing I need is some grassy type of greenery to go with my leaves. So on these, I have scored two shapes, kind of just organic grassy shapes. And again, I want these to have some dimension, so I'm going to put them on the wave mold. And I'm just gonna balance it like this. No, or maybe like that and put it in the kiln for a slump along with my leaves I could even do my leaf at the same time and when they come out they will have some dimension to them um, an idea I have today is I have a piece of clear which is just going to be the background this one measures 8 by 12 and I made a transparent blue vase and I just cut this out of paper kind of made a pattern and I am going to, I want this to stick out a little bit from the base so that when I assemble the whole thing, I can put some stems actually down into this base so it looks a little bit more authentic. So what I did is I traced my base. I left a little bit sticking out of the top and I drew another line right inside my, uh, my tracing line. And I'm going to cut that out. And what this will do is act as a placeholder while it's in the kiln. I am going to have to use a um, slower fusing schedule. I have to be a little bit more careful with my fusing so I don't get thermal shock. And the reason is that in some parts, this is going to be only one layer thick and in some parts this is going to be two layers thick so all i do is center my blue vase over that there's an edge all the way around here that is about oh not quite half an inch wide and that will melt down over my fiber this is one quarter inch fiber and it should adhere to this background. And then I can construct all of my flowers and stems and leaves. These aren't done. I didn't put the um, stamens in yet. But then I can construct my, pat my panel over that. And it will look something like this. So into the kiln this will go without the flowers i was just showing you what it would look like after it'll go in just like this into the kiln and tomorrow we'll see what happened my vase is out of the kiln and i have taken out the fiber that was in there and i don't know if you can see but there's just a small gap right here so that I can stick some stringers in there so it looks like there is at least something in the vase. You will also notice 
that I have drilled two holes, one here and one here. And that is so that it can hang it securely. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have some photo or picture hanging wire. It's kind of a twisted wire you can get pretty much anywhere. And I am going to feed it through so that the end of it is on the front side. And I'm going to make a little loop or kind of a little knot. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'll bring it out about here. Use my wire cutters to cut it off. Boy, I have dull wire cutters. There we go. And bring it back through. And make a little knot there. And I know it looks horrible now, but we're gonna hide that so you can't see it. But the nice thing is we're gonna cover this all up with flowers here, but then you have a wire to hang it by. So once we're ready to do our flowers, we're gonna glue that down and nobody will ever see it because it's all gonna be covered up with all of our flowers. And I do want to put some stringers in my vase. Um, unfortunately, I didn't make it deep enough that I can fit these guys in here. They're a little too fat. I should have maybe put a little bit wider fiber, but um, they'll, they'll go in a little bit, but not very much. So I think it'll be okay still. But I am gonna put some stringers that go all the way down so it looks like I need to have them, oh, I don't know, about six inches. And that way when you're seeing this, especially if you have it hanging like in a window or something, it'll look like there's some stems there. It won't look like it's completely vacant. Maybe one or two more. And I'm not too worried about what it looks like at the top yet because those are all gonna be glued down and um, we'll cover the top with some flowers. And if you want, you could bend these stringers. You can put them over a mold and slope them to bend them. You can use a candle or a torch to bend them. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. And then I'm gonna do just a dry run. I wanna see kind of where I want my flowers to be. And I don't mind if they go over the top or over the edge. And the, when you're doing any kind of floral arrangement, with real flowers at least, um, you really don't wanna have an even number of flowers. It's best if you have an odd number of flowers. It looks more realistic, more organic. And you can see how I've covered up that wire. You won't even know that it's there. I'm adding some of my leaves that I've made and I've, um, they're out of the kiln and I have um, rounded them, I've shaped them. Okay, I'm gonna put this guy up here, this guy down here. And I have an odd number of flowers, so that's perfect. I think that's about what I want. I'm thinking, wondering if I want something here. Um, I also have these pieces that I've made that I have um, just cut random shapes that are kind of leaf shaped or stem shaped and put them over a mold too. So we will see how that goes. So, um, I'm going to mix up some two-part epoxy. I'm gonna, just like I did earlier in the video, I'm going to mix it even parts and I will be right back and we will start gluing. I've mixed up my epoxy even parts of part A and part B 
and I'm going to kind of move my flowers out of the way, kind of remember how I had them. It might help even to take a picture of them before you even start so that you know where you had them. And first thing I'm going to do is put some epoxy on my knots that I made. And this will hold my wire in place once it's dried. The other thing I need epoxy on are these stringers that I put in here. And I'm not being too careful. I don't have to be too um, concerned about how they look because they're gonna be covered up by flowers. And I'm putting some epoxy on my leaves. And what I do find is sometimes I need to somehow hold these down by putting something heavy on them and maybe do it in steps, but we'll see how it goes. And I'm gonna put my flat things down first. So my hyacinth is flat, is gonna go down first. And let's see, we're gonna cover up that wire there. It's important that you cover up all of your wire so that nobody sees it. And some of my greenery that I made, I'm gonna put that in there too, behind it, behind the scenes there, behind everything. Oops, I think I put that on the wrong side. Actually, I think I'm gonna end up with a flower here, so I think I'm gonna put this one here. Cover up that part of the wire. So my wire is totally covered up now. And let's see, we're gonna need some kind of greenery sticking out this way too. Maybe right there would be good. And this big spot in the front, I know I wanna put my daisy there. And I am out of out of epoxy. Have to mix up some more. I know we're going to need something over here. Which 
just got somewhere I didn't want it. And maybe one here. And we're gonna put this last poppy right here. And I think that looks pretty good. We're just gonna let it dry and it is done. And with that wire on the back and the clear background, you could hang it on a wall. You could hang it in a window if you wanted. It's all up to you. Pretty easy, huh? My blue vase panel is done. It can be hung by this wire that we put on it right here. It can be hung in a window, it can be hung on a wall, but it is all dry and it's done and it is spectacular. Please keep watching this video though because there's more ideas to follow. And if you like what you see, don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Facebook and on Etsy. Have a good day, bye.